Donald Trump kicking off his first 100 days in office with plans to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, scale down environmental protection, cut regulations on businesses and the finance industry, and increase bans on lobbyists. Now, absent from the presidential to-do list, plans to build that great wall, hmm, or details on what will exactly replace Obamacare. So what else can we expect now that we're expecting? Let me ask Brett Baer, chief political correspondent for Fox News and host of Special Report. Hi, Brett. Welcome back. Hey, Kennedy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, this executive order uh, sent out to federal agencies that is uh, meant to pave the way for ACA repeal. What exactly does this do? Well, it sets the table. Uh, it just gets the vehicle ready by which uh, Congress could move to essentially stop the, the mandate that's out there and change Obamacare in that it would, they'd have to have a replacement that went into that spot uh, to pick up the 20 million plus people who are on Obamacare currently who yeah. wouldn't be. Um, so it, it essentially sets the table on that front. The other regulations uh, that were eliminated uh, are going to have to do with environmental regulations, uh, onerous to a lot of different um, businesses that came in, many of them in the last few months of the Obama administration. Uh, and you mentioned it, pulling out of the TPP, mm -hmm. Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, crafting a way to renegotiate NAFTA, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement. He's going to meet with Canada and Mexico on that, uh, but sign something to that effect. And uh, getting ready for a big tax rollout on corporate taxes and individual taxes that has to be worked with with Congress. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and those were all some of the big campaign promises that he made. Not all of the promises, but all of them certainly central to the ways that he reached out to disenfranchise voters. Uh, I want to talk specifically about about trade because it has always been a big part of the Republican platform, a push for free trade. So does pulling out of TPP officially open a chasm? And if not, how can free trade Republicans work around and rationalize it? Well, it does. It's uh, definitely not what you would see with a traditional Republican, but Donald Trump is not that. He is not a traditional Republican. If, if anything, he's taken over the Republican Party uh, in, in many different aspects, more like uh, Bernie Sanders might have done to the Democratic Party. I think that uh, what, how they rationalize it is they say he is fighting for better trade deals, mm -hmm. that he is fighting for fair trade uh, and not uh, clamping down and, and eliminating free trade. Right. All right, well, let's hope he doesn't eliminate free trade. Uh, what he didn't do, he didn't, uh, rather, President Obama didn't in his last few days in office, he did not pardon Hillary Clinton. And, you know, some say that was flying the bird to the former Secretary of State. Others say that it was a way to mess with Donald Trump and say, you know what, it's your problem now. What do you make of the non pardon? <laughs> I think it was probably um, a mix of the two. I think he, there was not a love between uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. I think that maybe they thought they didn't have to do it uh, and that the investigation would run its course. Donald Trump doesn't seem um, that into going down this road, and I think he did a hat tip to Hillary Clinton and, and former President Clinton at that lunch after the uh, swearing in on, uh, on Friday. Uh, I'll be interested to see if anything goes forward. You can't just stop investigations that are going down the road, uh, but they can not come to fruition. All right. Well, we will see what happens. Uh, it was certainly an interesting day seeing everyone there at the swearing-in ceremony and uh, everyone partaking collegially in all of the events thereafter as we are collegial. Brett Bear, thank yes. you for stopping by.